Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. I hope you are all having an awesome day. I went out to shoot macros this morning to the local reserve, but I decided not to take my GoPro with me. This isn't gonna be my usual out in the field type of vlogging, but I still wanted to share with you all of the images that I managed to take. But before we start looking at the images, I'd also like to show you a couple of apps that I've been using, one in particular, for quite some time when I struggle with the identification of the species that I encounter out in the field. One is called iNaturalist and the other one is Seek. Both of these apps are accessible both on Android and iOS. iNaturalist can also be used on a desktop computer, but I've been only using it on my tablet. It's just much more convenient. I'm just gonna open App Store so you guys can see what it looks like. This is iNaturalist in the upper right corner and Seek by iNaturalist is the other one. I only downloaded this particular app a few days ago and the only difference that I can see is that this one is capable of identifying species you know by just using uh, the camera in live mode but I think the database on iNaturalist is a little bit more complete. I just wanted to demonstrate first how I use this app. So once you've got the images uploaded onto your tablet for example and then you just go to photo library I've got an album already created here and let's just select for example this one up here so you hit add then there's this option what did you see view suggestions you just hit that and then it should come up with yeah fruit signal and picture wing flies and then for more information you can click on it and you can see all the observations people have uploaded this gives you a pretty good starting point if you want to narrow it down even further. I'm not going to upload that because I've already done that. As you can see, this observation needs more IDs from the iNaturalist community to be considered for research grade. Sometimes you get comments from experts and entomologists and then they can, you know, help you with narrowing it down to the genus or even sometimes to species level, which is really handy. If you still struggle with the identification of a certain species, then I can highly recommend you join a special Facebook group where people specialize, you know, in identification of, let's say, spiders or butterflies. That can definitely help. Before I start talking about the images, I just wanted to tell you about the gear I used. I shot everything on the Canon ATD, which is an APS-C sensor. I used the Canon 100mm macro lens with the DCI 250 attached from Raynox, which is a snap-on lens for an extra 35-40% magnification. The majority of the shots were taken with the DCI 250 attached, so slightly above one-to-one -one life size magnification. I also used the 600EXRT flash, along with the diffuser reflector kit from Crafty Bells, which I absolutely love. Feel free to check out my review of this kit in the video above. Anyway, let's start looking at the images. The first three shots were all water droplets. For the first two shots, I decided to go with black and white, just briefly about the post-processing. So I desaturated these shots. I also increased the texture and the clarity to the point where there is a lot of punch and contrast between the texture of the leaf and also the water droplets, just to enhance all those properties that make it look interesting. This is my favorite shot, this third image. I really like the vibrant green color of this blade of grass and also the textural detail, the striated surface. I also quite like that there are so many water droplets of different sizes. next three shots were of cherry blossoms. This tree was just on the way to the wetlands and I decided to stop and just grab a few frames. This next image was of a signal fly, I believe, and I kind of like the complementing colors if I zoom in a little bit, you can see all these brown and yellow hues that are replicated 
on this blade of grass or on this plant as well. This is a Opistonchus species, a jumping spider species. I've been seeing this particular species quite a bit in the last uh, few weeks. This is a beautiful male, I believe. I'm not sure if the species is a six-mile jumping spider, but I believe it is. I mean, jumping spiders are just extremely adorable and very relatable. This next spider species, I believe, is an eastern bush or beaver. It was sitting on a small blossom of a bottle tree. The funny thing about it is that I spotted it about a week ago and I went back a number of times and it's still there. It's been commuting between its web and this little blossom, so it's quite funny. This beautiful large crab spider that I encountered today was absolutely amazing. They look kind of ominous and threatening, but they are very, very timid and non-aggressive whatsoever. They're actually really useful for pest control. This next frame is a heavily cropped frame. This is a slender springtail, I think. Let me just double check on iNaturalist. It is a species of Entomobria. Yes, it is a genus of slender springtails in the family. I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. How cool are those tiny little hairs that are coming out of its body? Did you know that springtails play an essential role in the fertilization of soil? I didn't know that. I just read it this morning. Quite fascinating creatures for sure. And then I've got a couple more images. This one is a rather large mite species. I think it belongs to the genus Sleptus. Yep, that's correct. Just double checking. I really like the pattern and the interesting little hairs on its shield. The next three images are of a species that I have not been able to identify yet. All I know is that they belong to the winged and once winged insects and again beautiful wings really interesting tufts of hair all over the place i captured the first image from a high angle from an oblique angle just for identification purposes for the subsequent images i decided to go to the other side of this dead trunk that i spotted this beautiful specimen on and used a very low angle and created this beautiful both foreground and background bokeh This last image that I captured of a crane fly was just about 20 meters from home. The wind was pretty bad, it was blowing the fly quite a bit and I was really surprised that this shot came out as sharp as it did. So these are all the shots that I want to share with you guys. Please let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. Thank you so much for watching and if you are new here please consider subscribing and see you guys very soon in the next one.